Hello, my name is Alec Wallen, and I, and I will be presenting the history of McCall in a brief overview. Hope you enjoy the video. Anyway, so I will be teaching the history of McCall in an easy to understand format using pictures and things of that nature. Well, well, where do I start? Well, let's start from the beginning. Now, the area that was McCall wasn't actually called McCall. It was actually, um, it was founded by Finlanders who were living in the valley at the time. The Finlanders that lived during that time period, or at least in, within the area, were actually quite, they were quite, not necessarily strict, but they were very specific in how they did things. They prohibited alcohol, and they were very religious people, which this took place in the 1880s. In 1891, Tom McCall moved to the area that would be known as McCall, and it was named after him due to the fact that he was wanting to create a homestead, which essentially means that he was trying to create farms for people to live with, to live on. The people who lived within McCall and the town itself was considered wild and wooly due to the amount of gambling and essentially what used to be strip clubs that existed within the area and even to the point where handguns were even allowed into bars without a license until the uh, early to mid 1980s. Now, McCall during this time period was in a very interesting state because it basically was just founded. It was it's, it had been over 30 years since the initial foundation, or at least since Tom McCall moved there. So the backbone of McCall's economy was very much based on mining and lumber. Mining came first, and that was a, due to the amount of gold that was in the western region, including Idaho. After mining, a sawmill was produced on the lake where today, where Rotary Park is, which is somewhere in town, I don't even know. So anyway, after seeing that lumber could be used to build homes effectively with a sawmill, a sawmill was produced in the 1920s. Now, there was a regular pattern for these sawmills. They would be created, burned down, created, burned down. And this happened over and over and over and over, very much to the same sawmill, until the last sawmill closed down in 1977, until it inevitably burned down in 1988. Now, what was used to transport all this lumber from the sawmill was the railroad that used to exist within the town, which was pulled up in the 1980s. The, the railroad was used as a way to transport that lumber from McCall down to Boise. It, tr it, passed, through, it passed through the middle of town and it, it made its way down to Cascade where the mill there, to get the wood from there, and then take it down to Boise through the Northern Union Pacific Rail Line. Now the Northern Union Pacific Rail, rail Line, excuse me, was also used for transportation. It was used to transport visitors from the Boise area to come up to McCall so that way they could get away from the heat, or that was the main argument at least. Now McCall itself was basically running off of this format for a long time, until the late 1980s when tourism was starting to grow, especially from the city areas such as Boise. In 1924, to alleviate the boredom in McCall, a man named Corey Engen, an Olympic ski champion and resident of McCall, decided to create the Winter Carnival, which was used as a competition. Approximately 70 sculptures would be created and they would be used in a competition, which, and in McCall, is still done today, and approximately 10,000 residents, or 10 to 50,000 residents, usually attend over the course of 10 days. Now, we don't, now McCall doesn't do this as much 
anymore or if at all. But what they used to do also, aside from the sculptures, they also used sled dogs for races, of course, because competition. So to finish off today, which is filled with a bunch of information that you may or may not remember, but that is very subjective, of course, let's finish off with a bit of trivia. So in 1938, there was a little film called Northwest Passage being filmed here in the McCall area. The film starred Spencer Tracy, and it was essentially about men trying to take resources from the Native Americans that lived in the area, which then led into a whole other story arc. Now, the film was, it was, it was filmed in the call in 1938, and wasn't released in theaters until 1940. The film was actually a major hit, and it led to many different uh, spin-offs and TV shows of that nature. However, the film itself had always been desired, it always desired to get a sequel, but it never did. So, so there you go, Macaulayans. You can't say this town isn't important enough. All right, all right, I'm, uh, oh, very passionate about that. Anyway, McCall is a very interesting town with a very interesting backstory, and those who live in it should at least have a brief overview or understanding of what's going on, because if they don't, doesn't matter to them so it's not like it really is a big deal oh yeah and one last thing I know I'm wearing a Dungeons and Dragons t-shirt and I know it looks distracting all in all I thank you for watching and I hope you learned something